I'm Kate, I'm the Executive Assistant. I'm Laura, the Business Growth Coordinator. I'm Shelby and I'm the Finance and Operations Coordinator. I'm Brooklyn, the Creative Marketing Coordinator. I'm Taryn and I'm the Executive Director. In January of 2022, we completed the Bowman County Strategic Plan. We're very proud of the involvement that we received from both community members and elected officials throughout the county. It really helped give us a key to strategic growth. As part of the implementation strategy, we did form an action committee that will meet annually to make sure that the plan is carried forward. The action committee is made up of members from leadership, but also community members. This plan serves as a guide to drive economic development and community development. The full Bowman County Strategic Plan is available at growingbowmancounty.com as well as minutes from the Action Committee. Marketplace for Kids is a collaborative event that we worked with the Bowman County Elementary School and the Marketplace for Kids organization to bring to Bowman in February 2022. The main focus of this event is to make sure that kids have an opportunity for career exploration and learn about entrepreneurship. You know, kids come to school every day and they get in the grind, they do their work, but Marketplace for Kids helps them learn the why to that and really to kind of look into that future. The Marketplace for Kids is really meant to get them outside of their regular day-to-day -day activities and look at what they're learning as a potential future career or a new business that they want to start. We're really excited about those presenters that do come in and tell their stories and share their experiences. My favorite part of the day is watching those light bulb moments for the students, like, oh, you can do that and you can do that here. I think the volunteers and the teachers probably like the breakout sessions and a lot of them bring in hands-on activities too, so when the kids can actually dive in and tinker with things, mess with things, they love that. But I like the whole group assembly just because then we're all in one room and you can see and feel the excitement. We ask local businesses and leaders in the area to bring ideas forth to present to the students. Overall, the event had five schools with 220 students, over 28 presenters, and over 200 volunteers. I think youth entrepreneurship is that way to allow students to see the applications of the things they're learning in the classroom in the real world and create that opportunity to innovate. We hosted our third community challenge and had two projects that went to the live vote by the community. The winning project was Crossroads Custom Designs with an art installation at the end of Main Street. The project was awarded $7,000 and will be completed in spring of 2023. Applications are now being accepted for the 2023 Community Challenge. We are so excited to see what will come from those. Workforce continues to be the leading challenge for our area businesses. These classes offer the opportunity for employees and owners and managers to build their soft skills in order to further grow their businesses as part of our initiative to continue to develop the workforce. We have been offering classes since 2019. We continue to make workforce development a number one priority and have our 2023 schedule already planned. Um, it helped us because we are a grain elevator and we don't do a whole lot of Facebook, but we do have some individuals that we like to reach out to in the area and it's nice to be able to have those options available to take here in town and not have to travel. A major focus was placed on workforce in Bowman County. We see this as a challenge across the state, but we really wanted to focus on how we can move the needle right here for our area businesses. We focus on education and upskilling and reskilling workforce, but this year we sat down with industry leaders and asked them really what was impacting their ability to bring in new workforce. We heard a number of different challenges, including recruiting to a rural area, having the skills necessary for a specific trade, as well as the ability to offer competitive pay. As a way to help our businesses address their workforce challenges, we rolled out four new incentives for workforce, including a sign-on bonus, a program to help with career advancement of existing employees, 
as well as tuition and relocation assistance to help recruit new employees to the area. We've seen incredible interest in these programs and are excited to continue it into 2023. Another big factor affecting our area's workforce is childcare. In order to help address the childcare needs in our area, we also rolled out a matching grant program to help newer existing facilities expand their capacity to take on additional children. In 2023, we'll also be rolling out a program to help childcare centers increase their capacity and address their workforce shortages. This past year, the Bowman County Development Corporation took a creative approach in order to sell a building on Main Street. We released a request for proposal asking businesses to look at specific objectives that we had outlined in our Bowman County strategic plan. And we couldn't be more excited to announce that Aroma Candle Company has taken ownership of the building and it's already been a great addition to Bowman's Main Street. The goal of the RFP was to increase traffic on Main Street and add vibrancy to downtown Bowman. We're really excited about this creative approach to economic development in rural North Dakota. I started making candles in 2018. I was at a vendor show and there was a lady there that made candles. So I decided to buy a kit and I started making candles for gifts and just for friends, family, just for fun. And I started getting more and more requests for candles. And so I decided to turn it into a business and it has really taken off. I find joy in doing what I do here. It's fun to be a part of the community and bring something here that is unique. I enjoy making the candles. I've always had a passion for making things. I've been always very creative. So making the candles and customizing scents and new products and seasonal things, it's all very fun. My motivation for moving my online presence to a brick and mortar downtown Bowman. Honestly, I saw the ad for them looking for a rental in my small little original space and it clicked and I was ready to move on and make it bigger and better and I was running out of room in my basement at my house. So I expanded and it was exciting and new and it worked out so well. When I got my first brick and mortar, it just became so much more real. Moving from online, I actually am able to communicate with my customers better. I've always been a very big people person. Having my customers face to face um, benefits me more. But along with being a storefront, I am also still present online, so I get the best of both worlds that way. When I heard about the RFP, it was kind of like when I got my first brick and mortar, when I first went into my rental. It just kind of clicked in my mind, and I looked at my husband and I was like, should I do it? It's going really well. I can, I can do it. And it was just a really good location and opportunity to expand. And I've always had a passion for cooking, so it allowed me to add that to the community as well. In this new location, I am able to offer curbside lunches. I'm able to expand my retail inventory into some clothing. I even have an event area. I'm gonna do candle making classes in there. People can rent it out for birthday parties and meetings. And I'm offering public seating. People are allowed to take their lunches that they purchase from me and sit down in the front of my building. It's also a lounge area. People can come here and take a break. They can bring their packed lunch in here and just sit down. The best way for people to support my business is to help promote my business. I really like seeing my customers and my friends and family wearing my logo, handing my merchandise as gifts just to people who would never have heard of me if they wouldn't have done that. I think that's the the best way and the, the way that makes me the most happy. The SVDC was a really big help with me achieving my goals here. They helped me fine tune a business plan and a proposal to get my building and also helped me get some funding. They were great to work with. I am so excited to welcome you all to the new Aroma Candle. Business retention and expansion continues to be a vital piece of economic development here in Bowman County. We feel it's very important to build relationships with our businesses and these one-on-one -on -one visits have really helped us do that. They help us keep in on the challenges facing our businesses, but also the opportunities that we can bring to them. It's really important on these visits to get a pulse of the local economic conditions and for an opportunity for them to explain what's working and what's not working within the organization. These business visits also provided us an opportunity to talk to the businesses about the new incentives that we have available to help address workforce and child care. I think the staff along with the board are really excited to continue these business visits and I feel it will always be an important piece of economic development here in Bowman County. A large two-story mural was painted at the top of the former Sears Tower on Main Street. This was the third mural finished in 2022 in our downtown district in Bowman. 
The response to the murals has been outstanding and we are so excited about the increased vibrancy and foot traffic it brings to our downtown district. We were so excited to partner with local artist Roxanne McFarland to paint this amazing mural. The reason I love art is because I am very much an introvert and art is some way that I can express myself. I've kind of dabbled in a lot of different crafts and things like that, but I never discovered my actual love of painting really as much as I did doing this project. It pushed me beyond my boundaries of what I thought I could do. I hope to do more murals in the future. I've just really enjoyed it and it was such an honor to be considered part of this whole project. I love the letters and the numbers, the design. It was such a neat thing, the bright colors, and I just think it draws you in. The biggest challenge of the mural was getting this beautiful design from 11 by 17 piece of paper onto a 20 foot wall <laughs> and to have the proportions look correctly. It was a group effort. It was such a neat collaboration of the design and the help that I got from everybody. I've gotten so many positive comments from people that they just are really drawn in. The, when you hit the top of that bridge and you look over, it just draws you in. And I think it's just such a nice welcoming sign for the community. It was actually our fifth year hosting the Fusion Conference. There's continued excitement around this event, and this year we saw over 150 attendees from diverse backgrounds and trades. We continue to bring this event to our region as a professional development opportunity for our area's workforce. I think a conference like Fusion is so beneficial to a rural area because it does give you that great networking opportunity with members of other communities and it's just an amazing opportunity to continue some professional development without having to leave the area. So to have that on an annual basis is fantastic. Definitely the highlight for me was Jeff Sabilico. He was quite entertaining and it was awesome to see him interact with the audience and he still had good valuable information to share. I found Fusion very beneficial because it gave me the opportunity to bring some of the material that we learned during the conference back and be able to, to share with other employees, be able to, to utilize in a group setting it is a must do. You get a big conference feel and big conference motivation, but still with that small town hospitality. In its fifth year, Festival of Lights brought several hundred guests to Bowman City Park for this family tradition. We are so excited to see the park lit and are grateful for the 30 organizations that make it possible. This was our second year of the People's Choice Award and this year it went to Bros Engineering. We have been fortunate enough to attend the Festival of Lights all five years. My favorite part about it too is that it stays up through the entire month. We have a college student who isn't able to always be with us during that time, but then when she came home this year, we were still able to go walk through and enjoy it. I love how it brings everyone in the community together from youth all the way through elderly. There's something for everyone between like the elementary kids that do the luminaries and the high school kids serving food. I love how it encompasses the entire community. Through a strategic partnership, the Bowman County Development Corporation continues to host the Small Business Development Center in their office. With this partnership, we are able to offer individualized one-on-one -on -one advising for businesses that are looking to grow or start here in the region. We're able to assist businesses with business planning, financial packages, marketing, and any other challenges that they may be facing. This resource is available due to the one-to-one -one match that the Bowman County Development Corporation is able to provide. We are really excited about the businesses that we were able to assist throughout the year, one of which was Brandon Hogarth with Bowman Auto Parts. Growing up, uh, my parents were always entrepreneurs. They started with Old Reliable Tractor, uh, ran that along with my grandparents for 30 or 40 years, sold that, and then when Napa came up for sale, they purchased that. My parents ran Napa for 18 years. The sense of entrepreneurship was always instilled in my sister and myself. When the opportunity came up, I jumped at the chance. As you pull up to Napa, you see on the side of the door that it says Napa Auto Parts. But Napa is more than just an auto parts store. We offer services for heavy duty trucks, agriculture, construction equipment, all the way down to ice auger fixes. So we offer a wide array of products and services that not everybody knows about. 
Now we can't simply stock every part, every filter needed for every piece of equipment ever made, but Napa's business model is if we don't have it, we can get it to you in a day or two. With vehicles changing, new engines coming out, new emissions, the parts and features of the vehicle continues to change. Napa has a system that they take a look at a geographical area where a store is located. So they have access to what types of makes and models of vehicles are in that geographical area. For instance, say there's a whole bunch of Ford Explorers move into Bowman County. Napa would recommend to us, hey, you should probably stock more Ford Explorer parts than if there's a decrease, say, in Chevy Silverados we'd probably stock less Chevy parts. Through that process, we feel we keep a good inventory on hand with ever-changing parts in the automotive industry. I enjoyed doing business in Bowman County because I get to deal with a lot of the people that I went to high school with, grew up with. They now have their own businesses, they farm, they ranch, and having Napa allows me to see them and continue to interact with them. I would recommend the SBDC to other entrepreneurs. I had a really great experience with the SBDC. Through that process, the biggest benefit I found were the pro forma spreadsheets that would forecast the one year of sales. I've went back to that so many times. I've called Laura two or three times to update them with real life numbers and work with that to see what project we could do. How could we add another employee? What did that look like, that extra expenditure? And, Having access to that spreadsheet data was just instrumental. I'm a numbers person. I, it has to work out on paper for, you, for that business venture, for that project to move forward. To have that capability, to have that knowledge, to talk to a banker with a representative of SBDC is invaluable. They have the relationships with banks around the area. Thank you to all the customers, the, the ranchers, the farmers, uh, folks in the oil industry, and the local businesses supporting us through the years. We look forward to working with you. We have a great team here. Please give them a call, and we do really thank you for your patronage through the years and look forward to working with you in the future. I'm Shannon Ellig. I'm the new administrator for Roosevelt Custer. We're really excited to welcome Roosevelt Custer Regional Council to part of our organization here at Bowman County Development Corporation. Roosevelt Custer is actually one of eight regional councils that exist in the state. And some of the functions of regional council include everything from workforce development to destination and tourism development, as well as grants and technical assistance to cities and counties. Roosevelt Custer actually contracted the Bowman County Development Corporation to provide management services for their organization. That means that we assist in their finance, their marketing, as well as me being a dual executive director for both organizations. Shannon is actually a, a full-time Roosevelt Custer Regional Council employee, one of our first of soon to be many positions we hope for the organization. We have found this partnership to be beneficial to both organizations. I've learned a lot since I came on to this role, a lot about reorganizing the board. Right now we're restructuring loan programs and getting those ready to release out to the public and I'm really excited just to be able to help people. Roosevelt Custer will actually be completing a comprehensive economic development strategy. This will be a strategic plan for the eight counties that we serve and then help us focus where this organization is going to go in the next five years. Some other focuses of Roosevelt Custer include CDBG grants which are available through the state as well as looking at how we can access other federal programs that help our region. Roosevelt Custer Regional Council Board is actually made up of representation from each of the eight counties. They have been super excited about the momentum that we've been gaining through this organization and they've had a lot of really good insight and input into where we can go with this organization in the future. I wanted to have an open conversation with the Board of Directors to hear your thoughts on who we are as an organization and what we do. 20 years ago I think it was uh you know, pretty obvious economic development was considered, you know, bringing up business and creating jobs in your community, and now it's so much more. It's the hub, it's the catalyst for your community, for your county. You know, so many things take place through that office. It's the bridge between the county elected officials, the city elected officials, the state legislative bodies. The development corporation is the one asked to try to carry out solutions and answers. We help connect some of that funding from the legislative bodies, from the elected mm -hmm. officials, from the municipalities, to those businesses that can then put those funds to use. If we would have stayed at that status quo, then it would still be a director and a secretary. It's evolved so much and it's gone out of the bounds of what you would think of as an ordinary EDC. 
How do you feel our office differs from other economic development organizations? We've got other entities that operate out of this office and that works really well for our community. Mm -hmm. One thing I do appreciate about our board of directors is you are very mission focused. Mm -hmm. So when we look at adding another service or opportunity in our organization, you really make sure that it does fit the organizational mission. As far as projects this last year, what excited you the most? When we did the strategic plan, you know, we heard about all the needs. The jobs was probably number one, people in the workforce shortage. Now we finally came up with some solutions. One that stands out to me is the childcare program and being able to help create another childcare provider in town and help an existing one continue to operate. And that came out of the strategic plan. One area I've really heard the board speak to is making sure that we're putting out programs that are direct benefit to our businesses. What programs do you see that really did that? The child care program and the storefront program. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen that year after year mm -hmm. be direct benefits to a business. Mm -hmm. They can rehabilitate the front of their building and they're also using local contractors. I mean those dollars are being spent multiple times in our community. I think the programs for the job creation, that money has been already allocated and there are some businesses you know that have, that have utilized it. One area that I often think people don't realize as part of our mission is tourism and out of our Bowman County strategic plan tourism was one of the top five objectives. The Teddy Roosevelt library coming you know that's going to be huge but being able to capitalize on that, I think is gonna be a tremendous opportunity. This past year, you know, being a lifelong resident of Bowman County was the first time that I've actually hiked White Butte. We've got some beautiful area here. There's reasons why people would wanna see Bowman County and see the beauty that it has. So I think we're gonna be able to capitalize on that. I think moving tourism into the travel center has been a, a huge step forward as far as capturing more people coming through for information. I believe most People think that the Development Corporation is primarily local government funding for our operating budget, but we're actually only about 17% local government funding that covers about 1.4 employees in our office. I think that's something that's a misconception of how little funding actually comes from the local governments. The majority of that money comes from outside contracts, from the chamber, from the SPDC. SPDC. And that's what allows our organization to continue to grow is because we're able to find other funding sources. I think it's really cool to see how we've been able to leverage um, the funds yes. that the city and county yeah. do give to us to provide economic development in the community. It's the fact that they are behind the Economic Development Board. Mm -hmm. Their support is very much appreciated. Yes, yeah, so and I think that's something you know, that we've worked really hard on was de developing that relationship between the city and the county. We have very <laughs> much a strong partnership with them. I want to talk a little bit about Roosevelt Custer Regional Council and why we took on this endeavor and brought it to Bowman County. I like the idea of trying to help it blossom Mm -hmm. because I feel like the southwest corner of North Dakota is uh, something that really does need to have attention brought to it. They oversee a lot of funding for the, the region and if we can help push that forward and we can have that located here in Bowman, I mean that, that's a great, great tool in our toolbox mm -hmm. to have that available to us. Yeah, I don't think most people truly understand how much of an economic impact it can have to our community, to our counties, to the whole county region. 20 years ago when they they were quite active, you know, you could see that impact and we lost that for a while. So being able to bring that back and to see the other regional councils throughout the state and the amount of federal money that they have access to is going to be huge to see what we can do to this area. I think there's a lot of excitement in our region about the revitalization of this organization. I'm proud that we were willing and able to do that. I do love that the Bowman County Development Corporation and its board of directors are always thinking about not just how we can increase Bowman County, but how we can impact the region, whether it's fusion, whether it's classes, whether it's hosting a small business development center out of our office. This board of directors has really allowed that opportunity here, and I think it's why we're seen as a leader across the state.